Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, at least I can hear some, uh, yeah, some some voices after uh, lunch. How's lunch? Okay, all right. Time to sleep now. <laughs> All right, the original idea of this topic was actually meant to be a 40-minute talk. And because we have a lot of great speakers for this year's conference, Michael asked if I can actually squeeze it to a 15-minute lightning talk instead. Well, when I prepared the slides, was I glad that Mike actually asked me to just prepare for a 15-minute talk. My name is uh, SJ. I'm happy that I share the same initials as one of the greatest men in history. Steve Jobs, but my full name is Solihin Jinata, not Steve Jobs. And I'm related to Steve Jobs. I, I'm not related to Steve Jobs in any way. Well, he indeed inspired me uh, in my current journey. I'm the co-founder at Pixel Onion. Pixel Onion is an award-winning end-to-end Drupal shop based in Singapore. Now, before I carry on further, I want to make one confession here. I'm not a very good programmer yet. Okay. Well, sure, I can read and write code, put enough comments for the next developer to pick up um, what are the codes that I, that I wrote, use descriptive variable names, think of decent algorithm, do debugging, and uh, uh, design good Drupal system. But sure, uh, I'm sure more than half of the people in this room, or probably more than 80% of people in this room, can code better PHP program from scratch than I do, or recite different OOP design patterns off the top of your head. Right. So why do I make this confession then? It's related to, and why do I talk, right? Uh, it's related to my journey of becoming a good developer. So I'm going to share my early journey. I started coding as hobby when I was around 12 years old. I started with Logo. Who did Logo before? Wow, yeah, finally, some hands up. I'm extremely grateful of my mentor back then, the programming teacher at my uh, junior high school. And then I pick up basic. Don't you just feel nostalgic looking at all these uh, CGA uh, screenshots, right? Okay. Then I challenge myself to do something that is difficult, and it was probably a decision that shaped my uh, adult life. I challenged myself to code single player mastermind uh, from scratch using basic, and I did it. Looking back, I regret I didn't actually keep the, uh, the basic source code. I want to count how many go-to commands that I use, actually. right? This small success made me think that programming is actually easy. I can always do it as a hobby. Now, fast forward to university. I didn't take a computer science course. I, instead, I took electronics engineering. And the third year, during the 8088 assembly language lab session, I wire wrapped the microprocessor on the breadboard, and then I coded a Star Wars opening theme song uh, with it. Uh, probably the only one with the, uh, with the yeah, song on the, uh, on the lab uh, session. And sometime after I graduated, I co-founded my first company with other partners and used the open source, uh, the first open source project in my life, OS Commerce. Who used OS Commerce before? Wow. Okay, good. Right. I managed to learn it off by myself too. Right. Now, all of this experience really doesn't show that I'm, I'm a good programmer. It just shows that I'm actually a geek, right? Not necessarily a good programmer. But at that time, all these experiences led me let my naive self to believe that, hey, programming is actually easy and I'm a good programmer. Until I finally met Drupal. Okay, <clears throat> okay. Uh, not to upset our gold sponsor. In Parallel Universe, maybe it's a WordPress uh, logo there, right? Okay, Dion not here, right? Mark not here, outside, okay, good. <laughs> So a quick introduction here for those who haven't heard of Drupal. It is an open source content management system like WordPress Joomla, uh, which outgrow itself and become content management framework. It powers some of the world's top uh, websites like uh, White House, MSNBC, Streets Times in Singapore, uh, today online university websites like Stanford and our own uh, Singapore Management University. Drupal has thousands of free contributed modules which can be found at drupal.org. Well, yeah, as luck would have it, I fell in love with Drupal at first light. Credit to my cousin in the States who became the matchmaker and introduced me to Drupal six years ago. Uh, but the relationship has been rocky since day one, and it is uh, really a love-hate relationship with uh, Drupal, which I believe has helped me become a better programmer after all. Right? 
Now, for those people who attended my workshop session on tutorial day, may find that the next sharing may contradict what I'm, uh, I, I said during the tutorial day. To provide the context for the others, right, during the tutorial session, I shared that when Drupal developer built a Drupal site, he or she must resist one thing. Can anyone remember what it is? Sorry? Don't edit the core. Yeah, that's one. Okay. So this is what I share. Drupal developer on site building must resist to code. Okay. So I believe this is what we share as uh, what we call the Drupal way. The context here is that Drupal site building, which is different from Drupal development, Drupal programmer who built the site and wants the site to be scalable, maintainable, secure, and performant needs to understand good uh, Drupal site building practices which is part what we call the Drupal way. And only when, uh, when we need it, really need it, then we write our own custom code, right? custom module. So when it, it's time for you to code in Drupal, you better make sure that you follow the coding standards, the secure coding practice, the design pattern in Drupal. Sadly, from experience and observation so far, this doesn't really seem to be the standard of uh, Drupal developers locally and around the region. And I made the same mistake too, right, um, when I just started. And this is when my journey actually began. So I talked to some people during break just now, and they said that most of the topics in uh, this year's conference is pretty basic. Um, well, I run the risk as well of talking really basic examples here, right? However, even basic things like cross-site scripting or SQL injection, these are really very basic but very important things, are mistakes that I have seen a lot of developers keep doing uh, from time to time. Okay, so I'm going to share more about basic things and how I learned to become a better programmer by knowing how Drupal actually handles this kind of uh, 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 vulnerabilities. Now this is what I wrote last time when I used other projects. Right? I just uh, opened up a shopping cart of PHP and then I just print, thank you for shopping at SJ Store. And what happened? I can see this sentence uh, printed on the shopping cart block. It's not necessarily the correct way of doing things, but yeah, it worked, right? Okay. Now this is me as a Drupal noob a few, few years ago. I just opened up a commerce cart module, for example, and I just print the same thing. Right? And well, I couldn't find that sentence rendered out at all uh, on, the, on, the, on the screen, right? So from the next slide onwards, I'll put in some of my own personal interpretation of some of the programming lingo that has been uh, used uh, all the time, right? Um, I had challenged understanding this as hobbies last time, and I hope that the layman description may help some of you who share the same programming journey as me. So after I dig out further, I found out why the sentence didn't render out. So it is because, hey, Drupal is an MVC, right? Model view controller. Um, so what it means is that it's a clear separation of data structure, presentation layer, and the business logic. In Drupal, database and module cover the data structure and the business logic, and theme cover the presentation. As you can see, there are separate folders where you can put the modules and themes. And inside the modules itself, you can, uh, you can separate it into contrib modules and the custom modules. Now, um, so what happened then? How should we do it in Drupal, right? I actually should look for a better example, but uh, yeah, this example probably just show more of the model and the view, where the model is really the database schema, and then you pull, you assign that, uh, uh, you assign the, the database value to a variable, and then the view layer is the one who actually render it. So this is a format of a tweak uh, template, uh, 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 template engine for Drupal 8. Now, um, so that's MVC. So I learned about MVC on my first day of uh, touching Drupal. And uh, the bottom block here actually lead me to the next discussion, which is the multi-language feature in Drupal. Uh, it's available since uh, Drupal 6, actually. And it is not funny when client actually asks you to create the same site in another language, and then you quote them, hey, it's the same effort as the first uh, default language, right? So. Well, sadly, again, I saw this kind of similar mistakes in uh, some of the Drupal uh, sites that uh, we took over. And what you see here is actually the pattern, uh, the new pattern for, for Tweak, right? So Tweak, as I said, template engine for Drupal 8. 
responsible for rendering the HTML code. In Drupal 7 and before, to translate text, we use the T function, but now T function become a tweak filter. And this allows uh, any text in the website to be translatable to other languages easily by configuring it in the admin page, right? And the T function actually leads me to the next uh, learning, cross-site scripting. I learned that cross-site scripting happens when HTML page produce an HTML code that is not the same as the intended uh, HTML code. Right. And cross-site scripting is really one of the top security vulnerabilities in the world, but I keep seeing that a lot of developers actually keep doing this again and again. However, yeah, so, um, so what we do in Drupal is that there is this feature called, uh, this function called uh, sanitization. So through the T function, it's the same T function, Drupal kind of like filter or sanitize the text to be rendered and strip off the HTML, JavaScript, and uh, PHP, which may uh, come from the value uh, of, of uh, that title variable here, right? Okay. Now, this is a code for uh, Drupal 7, by the way, right? Now, um, sanitization is also used for data entry to ensure that input the user enters to the database is sanitized first. Otherwise, it will lead to anyone? SQL injection. You don't sanitize the input, you may have, you may run the risk of SQL injection. So this is also one of the top security risks. The example here shows that, um, uh, shows the select query, but SQL injection can happen much, much earlier, even in the insert or the update uh, query, right? F without sanitization, the SKU variable that you see here may contain a uh, SQL query. And you really don't want user to insert query which erases all the tables of your database, right? So it's good to, to sanitize first. So again, in Drupal 7, there's this uh, pattern where we can actually uh, uh, sanitize the, uh, the, uh, the variable before we actually run the, pass it to the uh, database uh, uh, abstraction layer. Uh, the bottom example here shows a better model with the database abstraction. The top one is more on the legacy code from uh, Drupal 6, okay? So all the examples I gave so far are specific on Drupal, but not necessarily problem that we face on Drupal websites, right? It happens on every kind of websites. It's a common uh, um, problem for a programmer who just learn a little bit and thinking that he can do a lot, like me, right? When I first started. So when I first started to learn PHP, my only resource was W3 schools, which, mm, who learned from W3 schools before? Yep, yep. Well, it was not really teaching it the right way. So how do I get to learn about all these uh, PHP or programming best practices is by learning the proper Drupal module development and reading through the, all, um, uh, some of the better uh, widely used contributed modules and core modules, right? So there's a caveat here that Drupal won't solve all your issues. Not Drupal is the best architecture to follow for every project. As any other tools and platform, there are pros and cons of using Drupal, sure, right? So nowadays, you can actually use, uh, um, um, there's PHP the right way. Uh, in the past, like, uh, two weekends, there were uh, workshops on PHP the right way in Singapore. If you miss it, I don't know, whether. maybe in the future, uh, Michael will organize another one. Yeah. So, and I continue to learn PSR4, what is namespacing, autoloading, what is the proper way of doing object-oriented programming? What is services? What service containers? What's dependency injection, right? What's event dispatcher for in Symfony? What's big pipe for, uh, there's a coming, uh, there's uh, the, the cache uh, system that's used by Facebook, and it'll be, it'll be available in uh, Drupal 8.2.0, right? And to be honest, some of these concepts, I'm still learning myself too. And I often get overwhelmed by it, but there's still hope. And the next slides I'll show the resources which are specifically meant for Drupal. But this is just a, sh uh, uh, a way to show that there are help out there, right? Learning good programming skills by copying from good programmers first, just like, well, Samsung probably copy Apple, and now their Note 7 is probably one of the best uh, uh, smartphones out there. So how, how did I learn last time? I read documentation. Luckily, Drupal is 
Uh, Drupal documentation is probably one of the most complete for our open source project. So you can head on to Drupal.org, search for uh, different topics, right? Module development, and in no time you will touch on coding standards, for example, how you should use uh, two spaces rather than a tab character for indentation, or how you should use the opening uh, PHP tag but not the closing PHP tag, and so on and so forth, right? And in no time again, you will touch on writing secure code. And finally, obviously, you will need to touch on the theming layer so you can learn about the tweak uh, coding standard there. I subscribe to newsletter. Um, there may be newsletter for WordPress, for any other programming language or platforms out there, right? Um, but these are the newsletters that I subscribe to, uh, Drupal.org newsletter and the weekly drop. I look for good tutorials. One of the best, one of my favorite one now is a KNP University, where it provides the tutorials for Drupal 8 as well as uh, Symfony. Drupal is me has always been uh, my friend since I started learning Drupal, build the module.com, OS training.com, and of course, PHP the right way.com. Right. Look for mentors. There are mentors uh, everywhere. You can go to Drupal.org, look for people to actually um, yeah, just connect up with people there. Uh, they are more than willing to actually uh, mentor you. Uh, go to the IRC or any uh, channel of the, your favorite uh, um, uh, programming platform or uh, framework, right? And well, if you are more advanced, you, can, you should become a mentor too yourself, right? You will learn more. Attend events, attend local and overseas meetups, camps, conferences. Uh, I run the Drupal meetup here in Singapore. Um, yeah, sadly, we are a bit inactive for the past uh, six months, but uh, yeah, anyone interested to help me out, uh, organize future meetups, feel free to approach me. And yeah, I'm active in the Agile community as well, where I'll be uh, uh, helping in the, uh, the Agile conference uh, uh, coming in October. And there's a photo of me and Rasmus in the uh, last year's PHP conference. And not only attend events, but also speak at events. So by speaking, you learn a lot more. Not only the topic that you're covering, but also learn the soft skill which makes us better programmer in the end. Communication skills. This is something that I would say that is one of the most important skills to have as programmer. You want to become a better programmer, learn communication skills well. Before I close my session today, I'd like to highlight the following article by Godfrey Chan. Not sure if you heard of Godfrey before. Probably not in this community. So he's, prob uh, he's probably more well known in the uh, uh, Ruby community. And uh, it just happened that his Medium article uh, circulating in my uh, Facebook uh, 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 stream, right? So uh, this is the link, right? Rethinking Computer Science Education. And uh, it was uh, delivered at uh, Ruby, Red Dot Ruby, uh, that just passed, if I'm not wrong, in Singapore. So one thing that I'd like to highlight here is that the journey for non-computer science uh, a background programmer hobbies right, may be longer and more difficult. But you just need to strive, you'll get there. There's no guarantee that people who have CS background will be there faster either. Right? In Singapore, we have our own very, uh, very own role model, Michael Chang. Right? Well, his background is not computer science, Safflon programmer, and he's my sources of inspirations too. Thank you. Summary. So, you learn any programming, learn by reading a lot, learn by copying a lot, be active in the community, practice communication skills, and you will reach there one day. Okay. How to reach me? SJ at pixelonion.com, that's my email, and you can find me in Drupal.org uh, with a, a handler, Lozyju. I'm active in the Drupal Singapore Facebook group, as well as the P Singapore PHP uh, uh, Facebook group. And last but not least, Pixel Onion is looking for a Drupal developer, Symfony developer, and Drupal site builder. If you are interested, come and look for me during tea break or drop me an email. Thank you.